On 25th May 2022, the PDM government tried to crush PTI's call for a long march and used force to stop people from coming out to exercise their democratic right to protest. There was heavy shelling to disperse protesters, their cars were destroyed and they were beaten and detained illegally for coming out to join the march. Two PTI workers were killed because of this unlawful outage against the marchers. Imran Khan had to call off the march to stop further bloodshed. Pakistan's leading investigative journalist Arshad Sharif is targeted and threatened for exposing the corruption of the elites and the conspiracy behind the regime change operation. He was brutally murdered in Kenya on October 23, 2022. There has been no progress on his case and he still awaits justice. On 3rd November 2022, the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan, was shot in an assassination attempt in Wazirabad, Punjab during the Azadi March. A PTI supporter was killed and many other were injured, including some PTI leaders. The shooter's statement was covered by the state media on national TV within few hours of the incident, where he could be seen changing statements to make it look more like a religious hate crime. In March 2023, more than 2,100 PTI social media activists, party workers and supporters were abducted during a nationwide crackdown on Imran Khan's party. These also included children and women. They were illegally detained and their families were harassed and threatened. On August 11, 2022, Shabazz Gil's driver's wife was arrested along with her minor child for the purpose of collecting evidence. The baby was kept without her mother denying her the fundamental rights of a minor. The 10-month-old baby's heart-wrenching cries for her mother went viral and there was huge criticism from the people as well as the party leadership. On 8th March 2023, just few hours before PTI's rally, the caretaker government of Punjab, which is known to be a puppet of the current government, imposed Section 144 in Lahore to ban all kinds of political activities. This was after the permission had already been granted for a peaceful rally, which is a democratic right of every citizen. The police unleashed brutal tear gas, water cannons and rubber bullets on any peaceful protesters who tried to gather for the rally and arrested several PTI workers and supporters. In March 2023, a special needs person, Ali Bilal, was brutally tortured to death in police custody after being abducted from Lahore, where he was peacefully protesting. His body was thrown in front of the hospital in Lahore. The police tried to cover this up by calling it an accident, but his post-mortem report confirmed that he died of excessive bleeding after being subjected to brutal torture and a fatal blow on his head. Starting 14th March 2023, Pakistani authorities launched a full-scale attack on Imran Khan's Lahore residence to arrest him illegally even after he submitted a signed guarantee that he will appear in an Islamabad court. The security forces fired heavy tear gas and attacked the workers and supporters with water cannons and rubber bullets to disperse the crowd outside Zaman Park. The siege went on for two days before the operation finally halted. On 18th March 2023, former Prime Minister Imran Khan set out to appear in a court in Islamabad, complying with judicial orders. His caravan was blocked at multiple points and he was stopped from reaching the judicial complex along with his caravan. There was heavy shelling around the complex for hours. Imran Khan faced intense resistance from the police and unidentified men were seen at the complex awaiting his arrival. This all seemed like a conspiracy to assassinate him and make it look like an accident. On 18th March 2023, police attacked Imran Khan's Zaman Park residence in his absence. The police stormed his Lahore residence without presenting any search warrant and against clear orders from the court. They broke the front gate with heavy machinery, beat the workers and arrested several of them illegally. During the raid, they destroyed his personal belongings and took multiple items from his house, including food items and things belonging to the house help. Imran Khan was illegally arrested from the Islamabad High Court premises on 9th May 2023 when paramilitary troops stormed into the High Court to abduct him taking him away to an unknown location. His lawyers, 
who witnessed the entire debacle, later showed how they were all pepper sprayed as the troops broke into the room by breaking the windows. They were beaten up, Imran Khan hit on the head as they forced him off the chair and violently pulled him away and dragged him. On 9th May 2023, a false flag operation was orchestrated to defame and trap PTI. Without any investigation, the government started a brutal nationwide crackdown on the PTI leadership and its workers and supporters. There are numerous videos showing evidence of how unknown men infiltrated peaceful protests and incited people on violence. PTI leader Dr. Yasmin Rashid, who was leading the rally in Lahore, can be heard instructing people to stay peaceful and not to enter any state buildings. Women face the worst clampdown and brutality to discourage their political participation. The security forces were seen humiliating, beating and dragging them by their hair for coming out for peaceful protests. Hundreds of women are languishing in different jails in terrible conditions without any access to their families. These include elderly aged 80 plus and mothers of really young children. Women also revealed that police kept asking them why they dared come out of their homes, discouraging them to participate in any political activities, which is their democratic right. Using 9th May protests as an excuse, the government abducted many PTI leaders and forced them to leave the party. No proof was found against any PTI leader inciting people on violence and vandalism, and without any investigation, they were abducted and detained illegally. The courts would release them when presented in front of the judge, but the moment they would come out, they were abducted again. They were only set free on the condition of leaving PTI and announcing the departure through a scripted press conference condemning the events of 9th May. Many leaders were seen crying in these scripted press conferences, saying that they have a daughter or a son to take care of, signaling that their life was in danger due to which they were forced to leave the party. A Renat journalist, Imran Riaz Khan, was abducted for a third time on 11th May 2023 from the airport. He has been missing for over a month now, and even after repeated court orders, he has not been presented in front of the magistrate. His family fears for his life, as the authorities remain clueless about his whereabouts. In his last vlog, he said that he has been forced to leave the country, as he has been receiving a lot of threats. But he will keep speaking the truth. Even children are not being spared by the PDM government in what is evidently a planned campaign to spread fear and terror. Many children have been arrested and detained illegally for supporting Imran Khan. A 14-year-old has been in prison after the 9th May false flag operation. A 6-year-old was arrested along with his father for distributing sweets on Imran Khan's release. The elderly and critically ill PTI workers and leadership is also being harassed and abducted, putting their life in danger. This is to pressurize them to leave PTI through a scripted press conference. A PTI worker who just suffered a heart attack can be heard saying that he has a surgery scheduled for the next morning and the doctors have advised him not to leave the hospital. But the security forces are taking him regardless. Another PTI leader, Dr. Yasmin, who is 80 plus, was also forcibly discharged from the hospital and arrested. A series of fake FIRs and bogus cases have been filed against several PTI leaders, social media activists and ground workers to politically victimize them and force them to end their support for PTI and Imran Khan. Many are even being blackmailed into giving statements against Imran Khan, blaming him for orchestrating the attacks on state buildings and for inciting people on violence. 150 plus bogus FIRs have so far been registered against Imran Khan alone across the country under terrorism, sedition, contempt of court, blasphemy and even murder. Many PTI leaders and workers' houses were raided at night without any arrest or search warrants. The police, along with unknown men, would not just harass the family members, but would destroy everything in their homes to pressurize them. They would even break their cars, and in many cases will bring down the whole house to punish these people for supporting Imran Khan and PTI. Many PTI leaders reported that authorities illegally sealed their businesses just to blackmail them into leaving PTI.
Mia Aslam Iqbal, former senior minister of Punjab, wrote the ordeal his family faced at the hands of the Speedium government. 30 to 40 people entered his house and started harassing his family, including his 85-year-old mother. The police took everything valuable, including his daughter's dowry, whose wedding was in a few days. He also added that many of his family members' houses have been raided multiple times just to pressurize him. There are numerous stories of hundreds of houses being raided and looted by the security forces violating all human rights. There are numerous reports coming out that women are being harassed in jails. Many protesters share horror stories of being threatened with rape if they come out to protest. The press conference of the Interior Minister of Pakistan, Rana Sanaullah, also raised questions on women's safety in jails. His body language and the fact that he had to conduct an emergency press conference after midnight shows that this might be a desperate attempt to cover up and preempt the horror stories about to break in the media. Women have never been so mistreated and harassed by the state for exercising their right to peacefully protest. Former Federal Minister and MNA Murad Said has been receiving death threats for the past few months and had to go into hiding. He also wrote a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan about his life being under serious threat. The President of Pakistan, Dr. R.F. Alvi, also wrote to the Chief Justice of Pakistan requesting him to look into this matter. Just like Arshad Sharif, there are agencies out to kill him for being vocal against injustice and for his unwavering support for Imran Khan. At least 10,000 people were arrested and around 25 protesters were killed during the 9th May protests as a result of straight firing by the security forces. Hundreds were also wounded and many of them were critically injured and hospitalized. This included women and children as well. There are reports that political prisoners are being kept in barbaric conditions violating their basic rights. Many of them are not allowed to meet their families and denied proper food and sleep arrangements. A former federal minister, Shahriar Afridi, is being kept in a death cell. He was not allowed any access to his family, and because of being kept in worse conditions in a death cell, his health has deteriorated. His lawyer narrated the ordeal. The abducted and illegally detained PTI leaders and workers talked about numerous stories of torture, both mental and physical, during their illegal detention. Dr. Shehbaz Gill, Senator Azam Savati, and Halim Adil Sheikh were all tortured during custody. A PTI worker, Ali Bilal, was brutally tortured in police custody and lost his life. Another worker, Zakir Mardan, narrates his story of how he was abducted, tortured, and humiliated for simply supporting Imran Khan. Pakistan's constitution guarantees the right to privacy as a fundamental right. Yet, there is an overwhelming increase in the release of private audios and videos by the PDM government as a tool to blackmail the PTI leadership and workers. The Prevention of Electronic Crimes Act 2016 prescribes up to three years in jail or up to one million rupees in fine, or both, for making videos and pictures while the government is blatantly violating this act. Using the events of 9th May as an excuse to crush PTI, Pakistan's government is now establishing military courts to try the protesters arrested on and after 9th May. They are even planning to try Imran Khan in a military court blaming him for orchestrating the 9th May attacks. Although he was in detention on that day with absolutely no idea of these events, nor there is any proof that he ever incited people on violence. These courts are against the constitution of Pakistan and a huge human rights violation as there is no transparency and the risk of injustice due to the absence of fair trial. Two major provinces of Pakistan, Punjab and KPK are currently running under an illegal caretaker government. According to the constitution, their tenure is 90 days which has already ended. Even after clear court orders for conducting elections on 14th May 2023, the PDM government refused to conduct any elections violating the constitution and the orders of the Supreme Court of Pakistan. Democracy has died as there is no democratically elected government present to govern these two provinces. People are being forced to accept these illegal puppet governments. The right to choose a representative through a vote is guaranteed in the preamble to the constitution of Pakistan. Pakistan's media regulator PEMRA imposed a ban on the telecast of PTI chairman Imran Khan's live speeches in August 2022. On 31st May 2023, 
Pemra sent out another directive to media houses instructing in clear terms that Imran Khan's name should not be mentioned, his picture not shown, his voice not heard, even a mention on the channel's sticker tapes was not allowed, which is a blatant violation of the freedom of speech. After Imran Khan's arrest on 9th May 2023, the government of Pakistan shut down internet and major social media platforms including Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. This left millions handicapped. NetBlocks, an organization that tracks internet outages across the world, estimated that Pakistan lost $53 million due to this shutdown in a single day, causing severe disruptions in IT services from banking to routine workflows. After the regime change operation, the grip also tightened around journalists and media houses in an attempt to silence them. Multiple journalists and media houses were attacked for raising their voice against state brutality and for showing Imran Khan's narrative. At least five journalists were forcibly taken off air for exposing the regime change operation and many others were abducted, detained illegally, harassed and tortured. A prominent Pakistani human rights activist and lawyer, Jibran Nasser, was abducted by unidentified armed men in Karachi, which shows that there is a complete crackdown on anyone who criticizes the blatant violations of all fundamental rights and raises a voice against injustice. Jibran Nasser's wife, who is visibly shaken, narrates the whole incident. He was later released after immense pressure from public and human rights organizations. Many media houses, including Bol and ARY, were silenced by taking them off air for showing Imran Khan's party's narrative. Today, the media in Pakistan is completely controlled to cover and promote only the narrative of the PDM government and the establishment. Imran Khan's name and his pictures have been completely banned from the mainstream media, which is a huge violation of the freedom of speech and expression. The PDM government is constantly using state media and official platforms to build and spread propaganda against Imran Khan and his party, starting from accusing him of blasphemy by putting his life in danger to running a planned campaign against him on fake corruption charges. The government also used state media to malign the Supreme Court judges. Live coverage was given to the protest against the Supreme Court of Pakistan, showing speeches threatening the judges. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan's speeches are banned from mainstream media, but his shooter was given live coverage on all major news channels. More than 20 articles of the Constitution of Pakistan were violated post-regime change operation. Pakistan's constitution guarantees the fundamental human rights for every citizen, including security of person, right to fair trial, freedom of assembly, freedom of speech, and inviolability of dignity of man. Under the BDM government, democracy is under threat and rule of law is abysmal. The government is using state institutions against its own citizens, resulting in blatant human rights violations. Citizens have been denied freedom of speech, right to fair trial, right to peacefully protest, and right to vote and elect their representative. Courts have failed to get their orders implemented, and they seem to be under a lot of pressure. It is a complete law of the jungle, and it feels like Pakistan is under a partial law. The arrest of PTI leader Mia Ibad Farooq after the events of May 9, 2023, had a devastating impact on his family. His nine-year-old son witnessed the traumatic arrest of his father, mother and grandmother along with multiple raids and vandalism by the police. He had to be admitted to the hospital in a serious condition but was discharged under pressure from the state due to his father's affiliation with PTI. Tragically, the innocent nine-year-old child, unable to endure the distress, passed away after waiting for his father for almost three months. Many children of other PTI leaders and workers are going through the same trauma due to state fascism. Many PTI leaders and workers had to go into hiding after the government initiated a nationwide brutal crackdown on PTI, leading to the arrest of thousands. Some of them were abducted and subsequently went missing. Enforced disappearances were employed as a strategy to instill fear with the aim of discouraging people from supporting Imran Khan and his party. These missing individuals were at a high risk of torture as they were placed completely outside the protection of the law and many of them had horrifying stories of torture and harassment to share upon their return. For instance, a renowned journalist nearly lost his ability to speak after returning from being missing for more than four months. PTI leaders who were abducted re-emerged on different private TV channels, 
delivering scripted statements against Chairman Imran Khan, accusing him of the events of May 9th, even though he was incarcerated at that time. These individuals appeared visibly shaken and in poor physical condition, their families had filed abduction cases, and legal proceedings were underway in courts to secure their recovery. Many of these leaders faced unfounded charges of vandalism and terrorism and were declared as wanted. However, following their scripted interviews, all charges were dismissed and they were released without any further court proceedings. Former Prime Minister Imran Khan has been unlawfully detained under extremely inhumane conditions. He was confined to a small, dark and dirty cell deprived of even the most lit and a surveillance camera infringed upon his privacy. For several days, he was denied the opportunity to meet with his lawyers and family until his legal team had to file a court case to secure a visit. A session judge issued a report indicating that Imran Khan was not being provided with the appropriate facilities as mandated by the law and the jail manual, which he is entitled to as a former prime minister. He endured mental torment through isolation and constant darkness in an attempt to break his spirit. Access to medical care, books, and even a small space for walking were also denied to him. Imran Khan is being denied the fundamental right to a fair trial. He is being incarcerated in bogus cases under biased judges who have denied him any kind of justice. The Constitution provides the right to file an appeal to have a case transferred to another judge and elevate it to higher courts. Yet Imran Khan has also been denied this recourse. There are more than 10 cases for which the judge has reserved the judgments for weeks. Imran Khan is being kept in jail on the basis of a bill which didn't get an assent from the president deeming it unconstitutional and illegal. Special courts were set up without passing the bill and the court proceedings were moved to Adiala jail where they are kept secret and not open to any media coverage, raising concerns about its transparency. Imran Khan's legal team challenged these proceedings in courts, but the judge denied the request. Imran Khan is also not being presented in courts for his other cases for which he is required to appear to secure a bail, due to which all his bails have been revoked. Imran Khan was convicted in the Sham Tosha Khana case on the basis of a flawed judgment by a biased judge who denied Imran Khan the right to a fair trial. Questions about the court's jurisdiction to hear the case and its maintainability, including the fact that the 120-day period prescribed by law for scrutinizing annual asset declarations by members of the parliament had elapsed, remains unanswered. The defence was denied the opportunity to present witnesses. Additionally, the defence attorneys were not given the chance to present their closing arguments. The legal team was marked absent, even though they were physically present in the courtroom. The court proceedings went at lightning speed with the judge calling the hearings on a daily basis. Moreover, within 15 to 20 minutes of announcing the judgment, police were already at Imran Khan's residence, forcibly attempting to arrest him. The fascist PDM government, followed by a puppet caretaker government, denied PDI the opportunity to exercise its democratic right to conduct rallies and protests. While other political parties were allowed to hold public gatherings without restrictions, as soon as PTI announced a rally, the government would swiftly impose Section 144, which empowers the district administration to issue a ban on a specific activity for a set period. The misuse of this tool against PTI was evident in the heavy police presence in cities where public gatherings were planned. Moreover, the police were observed arresting innocent civilians, sometimes for merely displaying a PTI flag. The police, under the governance of a repressive regime, did not spare individuals protesting against the burning of the Holy Quran or those expressing solidarity with the people of Palestine, solely because these protests were associated with PTI. The state is employing desperate tactics to delay the elections, which goes against the Constitution's guarantee that every citizen has the right to vote and elect their representatives within 90 days of the dissolution of the assemblies. Two major provinces of the country have already remained under a caretaker administration for extended periods in clear violation not only of the constitution but also of the Supreme Court orders that mandated elections within 90 days. The caretaker government, often seen as acting on the directives of the establishment, has been taking decisions that should be the prerogative of elected representatives, thereby overstepping its mandate. 
When questioned about the upcoming elections, the caretaker government representatives often await direct answers and fail to provide a definitive election date, which is their primary responsibility under the Constitution of Pakistan. Following the events of May 9th, hundreds of PTI leaders, workers, supporters and vocal media persons were arrested. While most of them were granted bail by the courts, due to the lack of evidence against them, the police continued to re-arrest them, often in violation of court orders and in some cases from within the court premises, which is a clear breach of the law. Some PTI leaders faced the ordeal of being arrested and released repeatedly, with some individuals being re-arrested more than seven times. These arrests appear to be attempts to pressure them to disassociate from PTI and provide scripted press conferences and interviews that directly accused Imran Khan of orchestrating the attacks on military installations on May 9th. It was observed that if a PTI leader or worker provided a statement against Imran Khan, they would often be released immediately without any further court proceedings. In contrast, those who did not comply were subjected to multiple arrests, alleged torture and kept in harsh conditions until they yielded. Imran Khan was arrested in another sham cipher case and he remained in custody for 15 days without his knowledge or his legal team being informed. The FIA requested Imran Khan's physical custody and remand without presenting him in any court, keeping his judicial custody a secret for 15 days. Atak Jail was designated as the venue for all cipher case proceedings, even though regular courts are functional in the country. This is a blatant violation of Article 10A, which guarantees the right to a fair trial to every citizen. Imran Khan's legal team challenged his jail trial, but was denied. The charges against former Prime Minister Imran Khan and the former Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi in the cipher case revolve around two allegations, that they had misplaced and misused the cipher. However, the original cipher is lying in the Foreign Office as acknowledged by the Interior Minister. Imran Khan's principal secretary was also abducted and remained missing for days before surfacing with a statement accusing Imran Khan of misusing the cipher. But the threat in the cipher was deemed a blatant interference in Pakistan's internal matters by two NSC meetings and a demarche was served. The content of the cipher, later published by The Intercept, also proved that it was in fact a direct threat to Pakistan. Then how did Imran Khan misuse the cipher for personal gains? Given that the cipher had already been declassified by the then elected cabinet and was no longer considered an official secret, questions arise regarding why Imran Khan and Qureshi are being held accountable, why the FIA is conducting an investigation and why have they been arrested. All these sham cases are to keep Imran Khan behind bars to restrict him from contesting in the general elections as his popularity shows that he has a clear majority. The country's judiciary responsible for upholding the supremacy of the constitution and the rule of law now appears to be operating as a puppet for the elite. In the country's largest corruption case, a former prime minister and a convicted criminal who had been sentenced to 10 years and disqualified for a lifetime by the Supreme Court of Pakistan was granted bail. Legal experts across the country are shocked by this decision as it goes against the established legal norms. Nawaz Sharif was granted temporary bail on health grounds falsely claiming illness. However, he did not return for almost four years and was subsequently declared a wanted and an absconder by the High Court. With elections approaching, he decided to return to Pakistan, but before landing, he applied for a bail after four years. The court seemingly expedited the process cancelling the cause list of all other cases, especially those of Imran Khan, who has not yet been convicted but has been serving a jail term while awaiting justice for nearly three months. Remarkably, the court has achieved the dubious milestone of providing the fastest and the most unique form of justice by granting bail within 24 hours of the application being filed, that too without the convict Nawaz Sharif being present in the country. Furthermore, his biometric prints were submitted by a lawyer, which the court accepted without raising any objections. But the same court abducted Imran Khan from within the court for a similar kind of case while he was in the biometric room applying for a bail. In November 2023, following the announcement of the general election state, the state launched a fresh wave of repression against PTI, marked by widespread abductions of PTI candidates, their proposals and lawyers across the nation. Their nomination papers were confiscated and they faced obstacles during the scrutiny phase. 
Their residences were illegally raided and family members were subjected to harassment in an effort to dissuade them from contesting in the elections. The nomination papers of 90% of PTI's nominated candidates were rejected by the returning officers as opposed to other parties, especially PMLN, whose 90% nomination papers were accepted without significant issues. In December 2023, Pakistan's Supreme Court gave approval for the trial of civilians in military courts, opening the door for the prosecution of opposition party leaders and members. The judgment faced criticism from various political leaders and human rights groups, who argued that trials in military courts constitute a violation of fair trial principles and human rights. Experts asserted that military courts represent a collective disgrace and humiliation for those who uphold democratic values. The leading opposition party, Pakistan Tehrike Insaf, labelled the verdict as a judicial coup against the constitution and a breach of fundamental human rights. The Election Commission of Pakistan proved to be a facilitator to sideline Imran Khan and his party from the political arena. From announcing its verdict in the eight-year-old prohibited funding case against PTI, seemingly overlooking similar cases involving other parties, to rejecting PTI's plea to disqualify the party's defecting MNAs and initiating contempt of court proceedings against Imran Khan and his party leaders, ECP's partiality was evident. ECP took no action against the pre-poll rigging complaints. The Commission rejected 90% of PTI leaders' nomination papers on unsubstantiated grounds. ECP failed to conduct elections within 90 days after the dissolution of assemblies. The nomination of a biased caretaker setup, including sympathizers of PMLN and PPP, raised concerns. In December 2023, ECP declared PTI's intra-party elections as unlawful, thereby stripping the party of its iconic electoral symbol, the bat. The fascist caretaker setup on multiple occasions shut down the internet nationwide ahead of PTI's virtual rallies. A widespread internet outage in Pakistan left citizens grappling with difficulties accessing major online services. The outage impacted social media platforms like YouTube, Meta, X and Google, sparking concerns of suppression of free speech. Reports from major cities like Lahore, Karachi and Islamabad indicated that internet users experienced disruptions and several mainstream news outlets confirmed the challenges faced by the citizens. All this to stop PTI from holding a virtual rally and from getting their message across to their supporters. In January 2024, the Supreme Court of Pakistan stripped PTI of its electoral symbol just few days before the elections. A verdict that meant that the largest political party in the country will be denied the opportunity to participate in the elections, thereby stripping millions of Pakistani citizens of their fundamental right to vote for their preferred political party. Legal and political experts and people from all walks of life were in disbelief over the Supreme Court's decision to strip PTI of its electoral symbol and declared it a huge blow to fundamental rights. The stripping of PTI's electoral symbol, the BAT, points to a broader, more serious issue, the vulnerability of national institutions to political manipulation. At the end of January 2024, Imran Khan was convicted in three politically motivated cases within a span of a week, depriving him of his right to defence. The legal proceedings in the fictitious Cypher, Toshahana and Itad cases is a sickening mockery of justice. From obstructing attorneys to secretive jailroom proceedings, justice was trampled. The prosecution team's transformation into defense reeks of bias, sidelining Khan's legal team without even a chance to present their case. Imran Khan's legal team called for a comprehensive overhaul of the judicial process and denounced the cases as a shameless politically motivated assault on Imran Khan. Rushed trials, evidence dismissal and an oral verdict without a signed judgment paint a picture of a compromised judicial system with a clear agenda.